Our sponsor, ManTFUp, can help you rebuild and restore your testosterone levels naturally. Right now, ManTFUp is offering our listeners 20% off of your order when you visit mantfup.com slash unfiltered. You can also purchase ManTFUp on Amazon. Get 20% off when you use promo code unfiltered. The links are in the episode's description. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest today, just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors at Cara Vitamins. I honestly love these guys. It is a place where you can get your personal curated vitamins suited just for you. You just go to their website, go to takecareof.com, take an easy like two minute quiz and they will send you your own personalized supplement package. Um, if you use code Holly, you get 50% off of your first box. That's takecareof.com. Okay, so today is, drum roll, my 300th episode. It's actually so nuts that I've gotten this far. You know, when I first started this podcast like five years ago or something like that, I really didn't think that I would make it this far. I was just kind of like, oh, I'll like throw this thing at the wall and I'll see what sticks. And here we are 300 episodes later. And I just, I couldn't do this without you guys, all of my listeners, and of course, all of my incredible guests who have so graciously given me their time, their energy and their stories. So with that being said, my guest today um, is the most downloaded BBW star of all time. She has been breaking down barriers and representing the plus size community community in adults since 2006 and has helped define the genre as we know it today. She has an arsenal of awards, including AVNs, XBiz, and a spot in the Urban X Hall of Fame. And she is an outspoken advocate for all things sex and body positivity. Please welcome Sophia Rose. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. You are so welcome. <laughs> I remember actually seeing you on Brazzers and like seeing how incredibly popular your scenes were and thinking like, this is so great, you know, like seeing so much diversity come into these big brands. Yes. And you were definitely there at the helm of it. So do you feel like any sort of significance in your role in like pushing body diversity out into the mainstream porn world, as we call it? I definitely do. I mean, it was kind of a goal. It was something I, you know, had hoped to achieve. And I, I feel very fortunate that I was able to achieve it. Uh, there were several people who had tried in, in previous years over the time. And it just kind of was a one time and it died. The, the genre didn't really take off. And I am so happy to see that, you know, I've kind of stepped back from performing with studios. And I'm now seeing these younger, beautiful women being cast and represented, and it seems to be going, and I'm so happy because it's like, fly. <laughs> fly, my girls, please, because I I worked for this, and I, it's what I wanted. And, you know, I just – I wanted to show that there really was an audience, there was money to be made that people weren't tapping into, and I think I did a really good job of doing that. Do you – have any inkling as to why you were able to kind of succeed in that area where other people did not? Um, I would like to think, I mean, that my, um, my reputation as far as my work ethic, my attitude, um, you know, I have great representation as far as my publicist goes. And I think those things matter um, because I had someone behind me to say, who with a lot of credibility, who could say, no, she is really easy to work with. She has a great attitude. She's a hard worker. Um, and I think those before me, not that they didn't necessarily have the right attitude, but they might have had a little bit of bitterness chip on their shoulder. And I absolutely understand why. It's very easy um, as a marginalized you know, community to feel a little negativity and apprehension. But I have always maintained to refuse that and um, – just show up with, I'm going to control the situation with my attitude and with my energy. And I think that showed in my performances. I showed with my male talent. I mean, all the amazing teams I've worked with at Brazzers, Reality Kings, you know, Bang Bros, everybody I've had the opportunity to work with 
has just been like, she's awesome to work with. And it's just a good attitude. And all I can hope is that the, the generations coming behind me are maintaining the same thing, that they are keeping a good attitude, showing a solid work ethic, you know, not showing up on drugs and uh, whatever, under the influence of anything. You know, I think all those things really matter. And when you really want to be represented and seen, you kind of have to go a little extra, and, you know, be on time and be ready and tested and clean. I've, I've heard so many stories of people just fitting into the fat stigma. And it's like, you don't do that, that mm -hmm. you're not going to get asked back. And I have always been beyond what, you know. Yeah. And it's like, it almost feels like you have two stigmas to push up against, right? So you say the fact Multiple. stigma, which you just said. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And then obviously there's like the sex worker stigma, which mm -hmm. is like all girls in porn are on drugs. Right. All of them are irresponsible. Or all, all of them are doing issues. daddy issues. I mean, look, don't we all have daddy issues? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. And I'm also dealing with ethnicity, you know, issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm dealing with age. You know, mm -hmm. I'm almost 50. Are you? Yeah. No and, fucking way. Yeah. And really? so, right. And so the teams are like shocked when I'm filling out paperwork. I'm like, they think I'm in my 30s. And I'm like, yeah, no, my daughter's about to turn 32. So I am, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm not saying I'm done, done, but like with that, like, here, let me shoot for everybody. It's like, yeah. ah, I just wanted to make this impact and kind of be on my way <laughs> yeah. doing my solo stuff or whatever I'm going to maintain, you know, as I'm getting older, just because, you know, as much as I still enjoy sex, I get exhausted. <laughs> I'm tired, man. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> I don't have sex on camera. I'm 44 and I'm like, yeah, 10 minutes is fine. <laughs> as long as I'm not doing most of the work. Right, right. Let's let the guys <laughs> do all the work. No, yeah. um, I just, you know, there's just a time where you're just like, you know, I'm I'm good. Like, I feel like I did what I was meant to do. Not necessarily what it came to do. It just kind of evolved into mm -hmm. a, a, a goal, personal goal, mission, a, a statement. Uh, so you feel satisfied with, like, what you set out to do? Because I find yeah, that... Yeah, I would have liked more, mm -hmm. um, but I definitely opened the the road for everyone to do more. And I, I really hope you know, things translate yeah, and, and cross over, you know, and keep going mainstream. We're a mainstream porn. Let's get mainstream everything, you yeah. know, and just make, and, and I don't want anyone to ever confuse when I'm talking about body positivity and, um, self-acceptance and self-love. This isn't about just being fat. It's about all stigmatized groups and I'm not promoting an unhealthy lifestyle and obesity and that people often confuse it and want to, you know, just confuse the issues here. It's about having space to live as a human being in whatever phase of life you are in. You could be 300 pounds now and two years be half that and be society, society accepted, right? But you're still fat to somebody. <laughs> and um, especially, you know, in Hollywood or L.A., like it's you're still it's so it just it's about giving pe people the space to to just live and be, be happy, you yeah. know, and, you know, who cares? It, it, and with less judgment, you know, yeah. I hear so many people say, I don't want to go to the gym because I feel judged. You're supposed to go to the gym to lose weight. And I understand that because I I feel the same way, like, you oh. I don't want them watching me. I'm just yeah. kind of making fun. I've seen people, you know, do the the videos and making fun of fat people while they're at the gym. It's like, well, yeah. where are you supposed to go? I was like, I'm going to open a gym for people. Who, like, yeah. like, if you are a meathead, you're not allowed here. Right, right. <laughs> like, no gym rats allowed. Yeah. This is where people who actually want to be sweaty and, and gross and get dirty. and Going there for a purpose. Yeah, and not feel ashamed, you right. know? I So you brought up a good – an interesting question that, you know, we all see like a lot of controversy around. Um, you mentioned that you, you know, are here for body positivity. You you called yourself a fat person, but mm -hmm. you said that you don't, you know, um, push like unhealthy obesity. So how do you talk to the people who say like, oh, well, you know, this body positivity is is not good because it's just encouraging people to be unhealthy? Right. No, that's uh, their own personal issue mm. is how I see that. That is a, a struggle that they're having with themselves. Um, someone be, oh, you look like you're going to have diabetes. You're, I am not even borderline diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I know people who are less than half my weight mm -hmm. who are or fully diabetic. Mm -hmm. You 
can be fat and be physically healthy. My There's not one doctor who has anything, I don't even have high blood pressure. Okay, and I'm getting to the age group where I should have blood pressure issues, cholesterol issues, just normal things with getting older. My body doesn't know that it's, it's age, mm-hmm. I feel like. Part of that is my diet. I'm vegetarian, plant-based mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I always say I'm like, I'm vegan plus dip and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, Those I'm are wearing, hard things to give up. With, well, they're just inconvenient is what it is. Like mm-hmm. I travel too much. I, I, yeah. I'm out a lot. It's hard to just kind of the well, dairy is in everything. So eggs are in everything. Um, so it's like it just made it easier to just say, you know, I'm really just vegetarian. And I feel like that has eliminated a lot of health issues for me. I feel like it's kept my skin a certain way. Um, I mean, I have good genetics as well. I just got lucky. But I'm just saying you can't assume every single person who's fat is unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Do I think there's unhealthy way? Yes. But you can also be average weight and underweight and also be very unhealthy. So I'm Absolutely. just tired of people thinking that they're all a doctor and we all know what's better. And, oh, you're costing society. I don't understand how I'm costing anybody anything if I'm gaining weight and I'm paying my medical insurance, I mean, maybe if they're talking about public health, like mm-hmm. free health, I don't know. But it, I, I feel like these are all narratives that people like to push just because they sound good. Yeah. And it's really their own internal struggles and issues. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, weight and being fat is subjective to each person. You know, 150 pounds to some people is huge. To me, that's thin. Mm-hmm. To me, it's like, if I got any less than that, I'd be like ribs protruding and mm-hmm. just kind of bony and not like it, yeah. you know, on myself. But, yeah. you know, just it, it, it's not, I don't know. Healthy's not, I don't feel like it's a size. Yeah. Just like beauty isn't a size. And we're also, you know, subject to like the way that media portrays women's bodies. And, you know, I think as women specifically, I mean, I struggle with my body image, of mm-hmm. course, like my whole life. And, you know, I'm heavier now because I had a baby. And I look back at pictures of myself when I was like, you know, 100 and 47 pounds, which I thought was fat then. Mm-hmm. And like, I was just going to say that now, you look at yourself going, oh my God, I thought I was fat and I'd give anything to look that I thought way, I right? was fat. When I was in high school, I was 125 and I thought I was fat back yeah. then. Yeah. I remember thinking like, I have such huge thighs. This is so embarrassing. Yeah. I was 125 yeah. pounds. Listen, I was 110, thought I was fat. Like, it's just like, it's just crazy. And 110 you know? was a bad day for me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that was like my pre-period bloat. And I'm yeah. like, ah, you know. I know. I was lucky I, I weighed that much, really. Yeah. And then I had a baby in high school and just everything Changed. got bigger. Yeah. And then I was like, kind of like my body like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually in, my, in, my, in that case, it also became, for me, um, I felt safer in my body because as I was thinner, I appealed to a lot more men. And I mean, I was 14 years old being hit on men in their late 20s. Yeah. And as a survivor of sexual assault and abuse, I wanted to feel safe in my body. Mm-hmm. And I realized, well, I was still appealing, but less appealing to so many. Mm. And then I think that kind of perpetuated my weight gain <laughs> over time. Um, and then I was also married to a man who also didn't like the attention I got. So he was doing everything he could to make me gain more weight, which actually ended up making me more appealing. So it was a weird kind of circle of events here. Yeah. <laughs> and then there I go into porn and the adult industry to go sell yeah. my body. Yeah. <laughs> like, here, look at how great I look. And yeah. just having this confidence of, you know, you know, my mom this morning as I was getting ready to come here, she was like, do you want me to shut the blinds? And I said, no, if they don't like what they see, they can look the other way. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, what am I hiding from? I'm all over the internet. <laughs> so. so speaking of, you know, coming into the adult industry and now selling your body, um, we all know, you know, the adult industry relies on like niches and, you know, specific names and categories and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone has their right preference on how they want to identify, um, both as a performer and in real life. Um, do you personally prefer like the term BBW, fat or plus size? Do you not care? Why do you have a preference or not have a preference? I really don't have a preference because I use all terms. Mm-hmm. I will say BBW and someone will look perplexed. So I'll say plus size really mm-hmm. quickly. I meant plus size. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'll sit in a questionable chair and say, oh, this isn't fat girl friendly. Like, <laughs> you know, or my car. I was like, I had to get a 
yeah, I had to upgrade my car because the other one wasn't fat girl friendly. Like I, I just, they're all positive terms to me mm -hmm. and all, um, they're all appropriate descriptions of who I am and mm -hmm. what I represent. So fat isn't a bad word, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably my favorite. Yeah. F, F word. Okay. <laughs> Other than free. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it depends on <laughs> depends on what is free, right? Right. Gosh. So I guess, you know, I, I like to always get, like, everyone's origin story. So mm -hmm. let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about how you got into the adult industry. I was in a Yahoo chat room. Oh, okay. And a photographer. I might have been AIM. I don't oh, my God. Like, like, I wow. remember right, that. Right, right. For, the, for you youngins, <laughs> AIM is adult, adult. No. AOL Instant Messenger. Yes, right. Adult. So I say Yahoo chat room. That was the room. original, like, chat room. Right. I so remember. I think I was on yeah. AIM, and a photographer and I were online in the middle. It was, like, 4 in the morning. I think I'd been out all night. I was living in Orange County. And uh, he just was like, you know, you should be online doing stuff. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you should have pictures online. People would be, like, paying for that. And I was like, what are you talking about? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Someone's paying for photos of people online? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand. So we met at a Denny's that doesn't exist anymore in um, Newport Beach at 5 in the morning, had breakfast. He brought me a physical portfolio because they were still – Mm -hmm. physical oh yes i still have um, my original shot, one yep he <laughs> shot jenna jameson and he, he was really a wedding photographer but he had done some adult stuff mm -hmm. he said i'd love to just do some test shoots with you so we did five sets topless i was terrified yeah um i used a lot of hand bras a lot of objects just strategically placed sent those um photos into multiple places and i was had calls in 72 hours we wow. want you on the cover here. We'd like to book you for it. was so fast. It happened so fast. And I thought I was just going to do like one or two mm -hmm. and be done. And 17 years later, here I still wow. <laughs> So what were some of those first publications that you were in? So Jugmaster. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's uh, in Chatsworth. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, paid my rate, no question. I, I didn't know what to charge. I didn't have a clue. And we weren't really doing content as far as video back then. There was some, but it was just real minimal right it's mostly pictures yeah. hundreds and hundreds of photos so um that was the first one and then bodacious magazine who that's the only um the only time i'm gonna re even say their name okay. <laughs> i have no association with anymore um good experience negative sense and uh score magazine which mm -hmm. is xl girls and all yeah. the all the boob kind of like the gold standard score yeah. is yeah, yeah. And score is the, took me the longest to get into because they wanted me to do a hardcore, mm -hmm. and I was definitely not ready to have sex with strangers. Uh, that didn't appeal to me. I was just out of a marriage. I you know came from a Christian background. I'm like, I can't have sex with strangers. Um, so that waited years, mm -hmm. but they wanted me right away. So mm -hmm. I was like, I can't just do pictures. And they wouldn't bring me for just pictures. Mm -hmm. And then um, once Jugmaster released, I started getting phone calls from other people. You know, how do we book you? How do we book you? And of course, all of the the fake, you know, photographers and guys uh, with we would call them GWCs, guys with cameras. <laughs> guys with cameras. <laughs> now it's the guy with the iPhone, you know. Ugh. So right off. The Everyone's screen. got a camera now. Yeah, we're all models. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and photographers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm a whole producer in my iPhone. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and that's it. It just took off. I really just thought I was gonna show my daughter who was naturally chubbier. And just say, you know, there's people that desire, you you, mm -hmm. you know, your body type. And it's really okay. She was a teenager, 13, 12, 13, feeling really insecure. I, and I just thought, let me just show you. I did not expect this career to turn into – I didn't expect to turn into a career. Mm -hmm. I worked at the time, I think, at Frito-Lay. You know, I was a mom. Like, <laughs> But you worked at Frito-Lay? Yeah. Like corporate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, corporate. Okay. So I was, you know – an executive level secretary, did a whole bunch of things. I was like, uh, it's just crazy. Like, I quit my job. I just went and I went. And you've been, and this was 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. 2006, yeah. I mean, did you ever expect that your career would have continued on for this long? I literally thought I was going to do one or two and be yeah. done. How does, you mentioned your daughter. How does your daughter feel about it? Um, she's always been very supportive. Mm -hmm. Um She's gone to set with me a few times for the more mild stuff. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, there was a time where people were trying to like poison her mind about me. Oh, did you see Twitter? Look what your mom's doing. Mm -hmm. And I loved that I've raised her so outspoken and strong. She's like, my mom's a smart woman, but I'm sure whatever she's doing is safe and making sense. Mm -hmm. uh, And I don't care. Yeah. And they realized they couldn't get a reaction out of her and, well, that's and again, of course, that's people projecting their own yeah. issues. Oh, how dare you? She, she's onto porn. others. Like, yeah, oh, she's having sex. Like, so. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I can relate. Like, as somebody who you know was raised by pornographers, mm-hmm. you know, you know, both my parents um, and my mom did some modeling and some nude modeling, and my parents were swingers, and my mom f- fucked everyone from like here to, I don't know, Timbuktu, mm-hmm. um, and like it does shock people that like I don't care like and I can tell you you know as like a daughter of you know um outspoken free people like I just you know I don't care my parents loved me they they raised me you know well they always made me feel safe and cared for they took care of my needs they were there for me and like in the end I I feel like for children that's kind of all that matters I mean yes there's like the stigma and yes there's like the shit that your friends might say or whatever but that's kind of all that happens even if you're not in porn. Oh, totally, yeah. They're going to find a reason to, you yeah. know, say cr- rude things about your mom. Yeah. Or your dad did this or you don't even have a dad. The yeah. kids are mean. Yeah, kids are and mean. And we are taught that by, you know, whatever we overhear from parents, yeah. ironically. <laughs> um, so <laughs> my daughter, you know, was already a teenager. She knew that I was doing this to help her see it. Um I definitely impacted that part of her. She's Do you feel very, like she's a better self body image because of she's very you? confident in herself, sometimes too confident. <laughs> um, and they, when I say that, I mean like why I'm like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't wear that out. Why? <laughs> like, yeah, and this is not the right place that we're going. Yeah, and, and, you know, I do the mom stuff. But then I also just let her do whatever, like yeah. whatever makes, and I, you know, my, my dad, when she was growing up, you know, he let her dress that way. I'm like, I let her choose my battles. Yeah. I can fight with her over black nail polish. Yeah. Or just let the nail polish go. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's more important things to worry about her drug use. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. she was, a, she was getting, she was starting to dabble. And those were, those were battles I wanted to fight, not nail polish and clothes. And she's yeah. dressed too gothy and emo. Like, yeah. dad, I don't care. We're, we're all, yeah. you know, going to face judgment. I'm not worried about my daughter's clothes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I grew up like <laughs> punk rock. I dyed my hair pink. I oh, yeah, listened to dead Kennedys. I pierced my tongue and all stuff. And look at me now. I'm a total fucking yuppie. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I came around. I feel like we all have our phases and some sometimes not phases. Yeah. But I do feel like it, like it just goes with everything I represent. People should have the freedom to just do what they're going to do. Yeah. They're not hurting other people. Why do we care? Yeah. Why do we have to pass judgment? And it, it just goes with what, and I've raised her that way. I was raised that way. My mom's a hippie, you know, she's just, it's just all about free, everyone being free and loved. And, you know, I didn't have the best, uh, upbringing as far as I came from divorced parents and just, just, you know, constantly being used upon and the back and forth every weekend. But I, uh, and I wasn't safe. I didn't feel safe growing Mm up. And my parents weren't pornographers. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just, you know what I mean? So my daughter, my daughter doesn't look at it that way. Um, And like you said, you had everything you needed. She wants for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she's a hard worker. She works Civilian jobs. She's very happy, content, lives a very simple life, very quiet. But I send her money every month Mm -hmm. just because I like to ease, like, oh, she's, like, stressed out. I got to work an extra shift because I need this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. I can help you. But she's too prideful to ask for help. So I just send it. Yeah. (laughs) Here's some money. Do what you want. I don't care. I don't care. She could be saving it. She could be paying her car payment. I don't know. I'm I'm not worried about it. She's not on drugs. So – I care about. <laughs> like, she's not pregnant, not on drugs. <laughs> These are two very important things. <laughs> well, just because I don't want to be a grandma <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> that that is that is a category you do not want to tick. Off. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe in ten more years. <laughs> right. I totally understand. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. So stick around. Our sponsor, Man TF Up, can help you rebuild and restore your testosterone levels naturally to crank up your sex drive, energy, and stamina. Man TF Up uses natural proven ingredients to combat the effects of low testosterone to help you feel like your old self. 
Testosterone replacement therapy is costly and can have serious side effects like increased risk of blood clots and prostate issues. Man TF Up is an affordable solution that has helped thousands of men all over the world combat issues caused by low testosterone. That low sex drive you've been blaming on stress? It might actually just be low testosterone. Right now, Man TF Up is offering our listeners 20% off of your order when you visit mantfup.com slash unfiltered. That's M-A-N-T-F-U-P dot com forward slash unfiltered for 20% off Man TF Up's testosterone booster. You can also purchase Man TF Up on Amazon. Get 20% off when you use the promo code unfiltered. The links are in the episode description. All right, everybody, we are back. So, Sophia, um, you know, back to kind of the categorization and fetishization of everything. Um, BBW is considered a, a fetish. Uh, how do you feel about that categorization? I don't think it's a fetish anymore. Okay. I do feel like it's a standard, and I, I feel like it was a fetish because it was something that people did in secret. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also feel like it was kind of like a, an underground, we didn't admit it. And I feel like those are two key components of a fetish. Mm -hmm. Now, is it still fetishized by certain people? Absolutely. I do know that. Um, Do you think that's a a good thing or? um, I don't think it's a good thing because I feel like it can be damaging. Mm -hmm. And um, those are the people I feel like, the feeders, the gainers, um, the people who want to just get bigger. That's promoting an unhealthy lifestyle and obesity. And while I uh, appreciate what those women are doing, their choices – uh, you know, they're free to do that. I know that when they get into their mid and late thirties, they're going to feel the toll and the effects of that extra body weight on their body. So can you explain to our audience, cause not everybody knows this, what like a feeder is or a feedy. Mm-hmm. So, um, that is a group of people who gain weight intentionally. And there's usually a, the person who's enjoying the fetish is feeding this person usually to overeating. Mm-hmm. Um, and they usually like the bloating and the there's usually a component of a, a fart fetish or burping fetish. Um, and I mean, like and I, there's a sexual arousal from it. Right. And I do in my own kind of research um, have experienced that it's also a control thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so it's it. There's a lot of different psychological points that are taking place there. Um, but I also know people who just enjoy the idea of it or people who are like, well, I, I can't eat like that, but man, I love watching someone eat that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah. And, and I know I have friends that are, are are feeders and feedies and they, they're, they've just gotten so large over time, but it's like, okay, what are you going to do now when you hit my age? Cause I know what my body and I'm not even 300 pounds Mm -hmm. feels like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, on my frame. Mm-hmm. And there is going to be a point where age is just going to take its – it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And so, you know, and these are a lot of the women that had judgment on my plastic surgery and weight losses. And it's like, yeah, I'm still plus size. I, I still identify as fat. It's uh, it's interesting, right, how sometimes we see people who are heavier and then they lose weight and then the community becomes very upset about that. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Like when Adele lost a bunch of weight. It is uh, – those are – I feel like that's society just doing what society does, but I feel like the people who that are the most upset about it are again, it's their issue, mm-hmm. and too much, uh, too many of us, which is it's human nature, t- we take on other opinion, people's opinions and, and internalize them, and make them our problem. Mm-hmm. But I have spent a lot of time on my own self to realize this is an issue with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to internalize it. And I don't care. I, I give so few fucks about many things. <laughs> All fucks must be paid for. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, like Adele, good for her. I, I don't think it looked great on her. I feel like she aged. I get it. But if that's what she wanted to do, mm-hmm. that's what body positivity is. Right. That's what made her happy. That's what being positive is. And that's why it's like this is supporting what I'm talking about isn't just being fat. It's just I happen to be fat. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're talking about the transgender community and the gay community and everybody getting older. Like we are they're accepting yourself and what we look like and having that liberty and freedom to just live Mm -hmm. without a judgment or 
how dare you be happy and fat? How dare you be happy and over 40? You know, and all these, my mom and I were just talking about that this morning. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not buying into, you You know, over 40, we got to be frumpy and ugly because I'm not trying to have babies, you know, young. This is, this is a mindset that's old. We got to be young and youthful and looking like we want to, you know, attract a certain type of person because we're supposed to have children. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ha ha, we're not having children like that anymore. Yeah. So do I care how I, my body changes as I evolve, like as I get older? I still at 40 is still very viable as I was in 20, if not better, because I'm more knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in my sexual prime and I have way more money. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like just the knowledge that it's gained over that that wisdom, is 20 years between 20 and 40. I think about the way I was at 20, the decisions I made, the way, I mean, I, what... I'm so grateful to be the age that I'm at. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. How like, you turn 40 and you're in your 40s, you just start to realize so much. Yeah, you're like, oh, this yeah. is like, this is the way. I can't like, believe I worried about these things in my yeah. 20s. But we're also living with that pressure of we got to hurry up and do X, Y, and Z before 30. Right. When you remove that, it doesn't, mm-hmm. it, everything changes for you. And I feel like, I was like, we're not rushing to get married, mom. We're not rushing to you know, have children by 30, mm-hmm. you know, cause we, we were talking about that and she was like, Oh wow. They had a late baby. And I was like, no, you were early mom. Yeah. You were early with your five kids. Well, I had my daughter at 40, I think I was 41 when she was born. Yeah. Um, and you know that over the age of 35, you know You're what they call high risk. No, you know what the actual term is? What? Geriatric pregnancy. That's ridiculous. I'm not joking. That is, ridiculous. That is the official medical term. I was geriatric. a ger- geriatric geriatric at 35, at 35. I was so offended. I can't I can't even laugh because that's just ridiculous, <laughs> right? But that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because we're not I'm, my I guarantee you if I got pregnant right now, my body would be like, "Oh yeah, we did this before. We know." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's but I know medically I'd be a high risk for mm-hmm. multiple reasons. Yeah. But I know my body well enough to know it'd be like, "All right." You know? I mean, they they say high risk, and I guess statistically it's true, but I will say that, like, my pregnancy was very easy. I had no problems. My labor and delivery, nine and a half hours from start to finish, no problem. Yeah. I just, like, pushed that. I just pushed her out. That was easy for me. And everyone, you know, the, my dog. Like, look at me, like, that was easy. I mean, like, compared to, <laughs> I know. you know, I had a 20, lot of people go hours, through. 21 hours of back labor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that whole, they really try to scare you mm-hmm. into, you know, having. A cesarean. Yeah. I feel like or, now that's what they're always pushing. Yeah. I was like, no, I would still want to do it even now naturally, as natural as possible. Yeah. I mean, you can only you can make the decision what's right for your body. I mean, we can go into a whole fucking oh, yeah. conversation well, about whole like other, having kids yeah. and cesareans. <laughs> I doubt that like my audience really wants to hear about that. <laughs> so um Yeah, let's not talk about it. It's not the fun part of sex. No, actually it's not. Um so do you think that why do you think actually that women in particular connect with, with you and your work? Um, I think that because I'm relatable and I'm very organic, um, I am not perfect. I am very flawed, stretch marks, you know, I have surgery scars, I, you know, cellulite, I'm, my legs, I hate my legs more than anything, but at the same time, I'm thankful for how strong they are and what they've put mm-hmm. me, you know, they've carried me through, I should yeah. say put me through. But, um, you know, they support this body, this big body. And when, if you've seen my porn, I ride a dick just like I'm 120 pounds with those <laughs> legs. So I'm thankful for them yeah. in many ways. Um, and I think that women who are plus size or fat or BBW just feel glad to see somebody online that looks like them, that that's who their significant other is jerking off to or they're watching together. I mm-hmm. get meet so many couples. Or I will say even women who aren't, you know, like I remember So the first – plus size performer um, that I had on my podcast was Carla Lane. Mm-hmm. And I just remember being so incredibly jealous and impressed by how comfortable she was with her body mm-hmm. and how much she loved herself for who she was. Mm-hmm. And as somebody who's, you know, like average size, who's, you know, struggled with body image her whole life, I was like, what does it feel like? to be happy with the way you look. Right. I was like, oh. Yeah. I mean, I, I never forgot that. That st- still stays with me. Yeah. And I have shared that same experience with um, in multiple interviews where they're like, I wish I could just 
bottle your confidence and keep it. Because that's like all that we want, because, right? Uh, yeah. Because we just want to love ourselves, but we're led to believe by media, by, you know, people trying to sell you cellulite cream and, and all this kind the of stuff. stuff. That doesn't work. It does, yeah. totally doesn't work. <laughs> um, that, you know, you won't be happy unless you're this size. Mm-hmm. To meet somebody who is happy with how they, like, that's just, yeah, that's all we want, really. Right. And I'm genuinely the same way as, as Carla. We very, or very, there's just no, I just don't care. Why? Mm-hmm. You know, and I've been in both sides of the spectrum. I was not fat growing up, mm-hmm. you know, so I chose to be heavier yeah. because I felt safer in my body. Yeah. And um, the irony was because we're talking about stuff that people are, are selling creams and stuff. The leggings that were ripped off me in my first browser scene, it was funny how that year came out, the little kiosks of anti-cellulite leggings <laughs> were everywhere in every mall and shopping center I could see. And those were the leggings that were ripped off me in that scene. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That became funny. a fashion thing. And I'm laughing going, you guys think this was a TikTok influencer. <laughs> that was me in browsers. <laughs> and I wore those leggings because I hated my cellulite. <laughs> that was the irony. I was yeah. like, wow. I, I picked the color because they were bright, but it was too camouflage. Mm-hmm. And psh, you know, Michael Vegas just ripped right through them and went yeah. went to town. And I was like, I ripped my leggings off me because then I didn't want to have to take them off. Yeah. Um, so I still struggle like everyone else, but it's not because someone's telling me mm-hmm. that it's not okay. I've definitely had my share of men who love my dimples, love my – I mean, we love dimples on our face. Why not on our legs? Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's just like – Isn't it funny, like, how fat's acceptable? I was thinking about this the other day, how fat is so acceptable in certain places and not others. Like, obviously, huge tits. Oh, yeah, huge tits. It's, this oh, is literally ass. just fat. It's, but, it's like, facts. the more you have oh, here, no, no. the better. I argue it all the time. We like a fat burrito. We want a fat taco. We want a fat paycheck. We want fat, fat, fat everything when it's something we want a lot of. Mm-hmm. Except a woman mm-hmm. or a person. It's not even just – it's men and women. Yeah. Men get away with a lot more than we do. Yeah. <laughs> but they still struggle. Yeah. Um. So I just – it's like how come we can be okay with the fat, everything else? Yeah. I don't want a little burrito. I know that. I want a fat one. <laughs> right? I want yeah. a fat dick. I want a fat everything. <laughs> Uh, speaking of speaking of fat dick, <laughs> um, what has your experience been like with male talent um, working in mainstream? Porn? Amazing. Um, I have had no issues with male talent. In fact, I've heard a lot of, wow, I, I didn't realize how fun this was going to be. <laughs> or, um, you know, can we shoot our own content on the side? Mm-hmm. Whatever people have been saying as far as we don't have male talent who wants to shoot with fat women – that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. I had no problem with men, um, male talent shooting, um, in the, you know, from the studio perspective. And, of course, we have, you know, our our content that we're doing ourselves, our own productions for our OnlyFans and things like that. So, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Joe's trying to shoot with every fat chick that I know and myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been shooting solo for the last few years. And then uh, last year I – I went ahead and had a, um, a press release that I was going exclusive with a shooting partner. Mm-hmm. And I was really excited about it. And, um, you know, he had been in a few interviews, walked the red carpet with me at ADN. Um, so, you know, I thought going exclusive might be a good, like a safer way to operate. And, you know, I wanted to do anal and I just didn't want to do anal with anybody. I wanted someone who'd be gentle. And, you know, so I, I, it was my partner but now we, you know, created a, a stage name for him, which I'm not going to say. <laughs> um, we created a stage name for him and we were, you know, going down this path. Um, and I was really excited about it. Um, but I'm really lucky to be here right now, Holly. Okay. So he tried to kill me last weekend. Jesus. And it's still very fresh. <laughs> so that is no more. <laughs> wow. Um, we had broken up a few times, but I went ahead and tried to take him back and work things out. And things got out of control, and I spent Memorial Weekend to the hospital. Oh, my God. I am so sorry. Yeah. So. Joe, do we have 
tissues back there? <laughs> I they're think right we here. do. Oh, we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, great. We were prepared. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where you want them. <laughs> that wherever is best um, for you. I don't want to ruin my expensive no. makeup. No, you look beautiful. <laughs> um. So go ahead and ask whatever you want. I'm here to. I mean, I want. I'm here to share my story. Wow. If that's what you want, where you want to go, but I mean, I want you to. I feel I... like obviously. <laughs> This is your story, so you know you tell us as much as you're comfortable. Oh, I don't. I don't even know where. I'm so overwhelmed with um, still processing a lot. Yeah, but it's hard because it was someone I really trusted, and never thought would hurt me. Had you experienced any violence with him before? It's just some mild um, confrontations, but I had excused them, thinking that they were provoked on my part. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm a stubborn person. I'm argumentative. I'm very outspoken. So the one other incident we had, I thought, you know, that was kind of a a perfect storm of circumstances over Mm -hmm. several days. And we got in each other's face and, you know. But this was um, 100% intentional. He needed to strangle me twice. Oh, my God. And um, I'm just happy to be alive. So what was, I mean, can you say, like, what led to this argument? Um, I think that it's just been a collection of things because of all of, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, for his online persona and and performing um, name, we were, you know, hiding the truth. Um, Mm -hmm. He had gotten a woman pregnant last summer. We were already together. The baby was born in April. Um, he has nine kids with six women. Oh my God. And they, I feel like he just, uh, uh, he took it out all on me. Yeah. That's how I feel like he's got some unresolved anger, definitely a narcissist. He was, he was being influenced by some podcasts that I don't even want to name, but I don't know if you're familiar with Kevin Samuels. Um, he was all about talking about high value men and this is how women should be treated. And it was very, very, um, in my mind, just toxic masculinity, right? Um, on a level that is just this is how women should be treated in the sense of like, and he ironically died in bed with a prostitute. So not that that is a the prostitute's a bad thing. It's just don't yeah. sit there and preach about high value men being worthy of certain type of women, but you were paying someone to have sex with you, because right? You're such a high value man, right? Um, so these are basically Kevin Samuel wannabes, um, and this podcast, um. He kept sending me messages like, look at this, look at this, this is you, this is you, narcissistic, gaslighting, emotionally abusive. Um, he was accusing you of Yes, abuse, and right? it's actually what he was doing. Right. And he would say that that's what I was saying. Oh, you're accusing me so that, you know, whoever accuses first is the one who's. Right. And I'm like, no, every human being has narcissistic tendencies. We yeah. all do. But n- narcissism is a true personality disorder. Yeah. And there are only certain people who really have it. And I could say, based on my knowledge and my experience, he really does. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it just escalated. And I have done so much. I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy because of this relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, How long were you guys together? So we were only together a year. Um, he, I, I, It's so confusing because, you know, oh, last year I was so confused Right, but you were telling me you were committed. I, I was financing your life. You were with me all the time, but you were sleeping. There were 10 women involved mm-hmm. that I didn't know about it. And one, two had gotten pregnant. One kept the baby. So it was bad. Yeah. And I'm like going beyond to try to be forgiving, understanding, and like work through things. Um, we went to Hawaii together. I have paid so much money in content that will never be seen or used now. Okay. Um and I'm not supposed to be angry about it anymore. I'm supposed to be over this. And, you know, we've had this breakup. And that I, I, I would say we had two serious breakups where I was like, I'm really done. I can't do this. Right. And I, you know, let him talk to me and work his way back in, weasel his way back in. And he did. Mm-hmm. And um, it just got worse. Like, he was complaining that I was distant. He was playing, complaining that I was quiet. I was. I, I didn't have a lot to say it was like 
everything is a fight with you. You feel like, you know, I'm trying to be argumentative when I'm not. And even hours before this had happened, uh, I had said, you know what, if you truly think I'm a narcissist, a gaslighter, emotionally abusive, I apologize. I, I don't think we should be in a relationship then because I have a lot of work to do if that's who I really, you really think I am. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of self-reflection. Mm-hmm. And I said, and if you think I'm a narcissist, I will delete all my Instagram, my socials right now because that's only feeding my narcissism. Like right. I was kind of conceited and played to like, look how ridiculous you sound. Right. So I deactivated my socials at that moment, everything, including my personal ones. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I said, why don't you sleep downstairs, leave a scheduled Monday, we'll be civil. I just, I need to stay in my room, be by myself tonight. He came to the door of my bedroom and just one after another, one after another, uh, trying to find reasons to pick a fight. Mm -hmm. And then it got confrontational. And, um, And it was because he was trying to take things that I had bought for him while we were together They were gifts, but as I would tell him, you don't get those gifts. Those gifts were based on a trusting, loving relationship with the man who I thought was loyal, which you were not. Mm -hmm. So those are my things now. Mm -hmm. You can have them when you've proven it over time, which he had it. He had the audacity on the way out to say, I earned these. Bitch, I am the established professional in this industry. Mm-hmm. If we're going to talk about what we shot content we've shot and what who owes who, you owe me hundreds of thousands of dollars because my rate scene or my scene my rate per scene is much higher than you 6 months into this industry. Right. He has no real concept of what he should have been paid and what I would be paid. And right. If And I had asked him, I said, if you want me to pay you, I'll pay you. But you have to tell me what you want. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't tell me what. But you got all these perks, free trips. I bought it. This man was living the life. You know, I, I always spoil my partners, but I went beyond and beyond, like remodeled a lot of stuff in his house. I was willing to buy him a $60,000 truck. Like mm-hmm. I, I didn't, but I was about to. Mm-hmm. Just so many things. And if I totaled up the money I've spent, I've nearly spent six figures. Mm-hmm. easily in less than a year. It's only been nine months, really. Right. I don't think he really understands or grasps that. I said, if you told me what you wanted per scene, now I have the right to say, okay, I'll shoot with you twice a year. Here's your rate. Mm-hmm. And not shoot with you more than that. But he was always pressuring me. Anyway, I think that it, I really feel like he was using me to create his own persona and then in time was going to take off and do his own thing. Right. And I hope that's kind of a warning to women in this industry. Like, this is someone I've known for 17 years, since oh, the beginning wow. of my career. Okay. We've gone back and forth. And <clears throat> I really believed he wanted to be with me. Right. So I was like, I'm all in, right, right. from the, the beginning. Uh, I don't feel like in this industry I have time to be – I don't have the energy or the time because of my job – to be dating multiple people, to be trying, if like, if I'm going to do this, I'm in or I'm not. Right. You know? It's also got to be hard to like being a known figure to date. You can't just like go on Tinder. Everybody wants something from you too, you know? And I'm not trying to, I can have sex. I don't need to go on Tinder and get a fuck buddy. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. Um, So that's really, it just, it was just like a series of events. That kind of just, you know, and it wasn't really that they were bad. They just, he couldn't handle that. Right. He had been drinking since four o'clock. He went through a bottle and a half of wine by himself. I didn't drink. And he had never eaten. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, we're wrestling in my living room and I'm in a chokehold. I'm unconscious. I I don't know how long I was really unconscious, but I know when I opened my eyes, uh, I was seeing stars. I couldn't breathe. My best friend was on FaceTime with me. The entire thing is recorded. Oh, my God. I've only listened to it once because it's triggering. Of course. It sounds like a horrific movie. Yeah. You can just hear me screaming, call 911. He's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. And I'm, like, gasping and um, the way I can't breathe. Did the cops end up coming? Yes. Um, There was a second time that he pinned me up against my stairs and, like, put his hands on my neck and choked me out. Um, 
and I thought he was going to bite my face because it came at me very violently, mm -hmm. but he kissed me. He said, I'm not like you. I'm not going to call the cops and, and then kissed me like violently and then left. And he took my phone and throw it, threw it and broke it, which is why it's broken. Mm. And so I'm like shaking. Couldn't have told you my address at that point in time anyway if yeah. I had called 911. My girlfriend had already called, but they were not um, going fast enough because she's in Las Vegas and I'm technically in Henderson. Yeah. So she was rushing to my house on the phone with them. Um, I have Vivint, so I'm shaking and at my panel just trying to call for help and, and can't. Like I am just couldn't process right so you know i was definitely in fight mode and went from that to fawn just froze just just frozen yeah in fear and um i went, i eventually called the two you know panic and emergency my phone was broken so vivant was calling me and saying is it a real emergency call my mom my mom's now alerted what's going on mm -hmm. and um we didn't tell her for a couple days but um the police were there already by the time that my girlfriend got there but he was already gone right and um, he's out of state, but he has a an, a warrant for his arrest uh, for a uh, felony. I was going to ask you, do you plan on pressing charges? I have no choice in the matter. I can't not press charges, mm. and I didn't know that. Um, and they said that, you know, because he attempted to strangle you more than once, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I lost, you know, like I lost bodily fluids, everything. Like my body went completely yeah. And I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know all of that was part of it. Mm -hmm. I've never been through anything like that before. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned so much um, when I was in the hospital. I was all bruised up. I'm pretty much healed. I mean, there's, like, some marks still, like, here where you can see. But I was pretty bruised up. Um, but okay, all things considered. And, you know, it's permanently changed my medical record. I have to let every doctor know that I come in contact with that I have been strangled and why is that because um there can be delayed injuries for up to 10 years when your thyroid and your carotid arteries have been impacted wow and I didn't know that yeah and that was what made me they made me go I didn't want to go to the emergency room I didn't want to go anywhere I said you know I'm I had taken a Xanax I was so upset um I was shaking so bad I was like can I just go to urgent care tomorrow Mm -hmm. Like, I know, I mean, the bruises were just showing up as mm -hmm. her neck was swelling, everything was swelling. I'm pretty sure his finger's broken. It's so messed up still, but, uh, sorry. Um, it's okay. a lot. You didn't want to go to the oh, hospital. They came back three times. I mean, I was freaking out every time I saw a shadow at the door and, you know, my best friend was there and. The sergeant you, came back and was like, let me explain to you what's going on with your body right now. You right. have to go because you could not wake up tomorrow with an aneurysm, with blood clots, right. with multiple things that are internal from this happening to you. Like a traumatic brain injury that Anything you're not aware of. That I'm just in, he goes, internally so much can be out. And I didn't know that. Yeah. And he said, it's also going to help your case with the district attorney. And I said, fine. When that moment, when he said that, I'm like, I'll go. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to sit there for hours, though. If they tell me it's hours, I'm walking right out. Yeah. And um, they said, we have a specialist who actually handles just this. Mm -hmm. And so everything took forever anyway. CT scans, I had to do all of it. And um, I'm just lucky to come back with just the bruises, you know, possible broken finger. Everything is, I'm healthy. Yeah. All things considered. How are you feeling about everything now? I mean, you've only had a week to process it. Mm -hmm. It's, I am very indifferent. I haven't, this is probably the most I've cried. Mm. Um, I don't even know what to, I don't know. Yeah. It's just like, coming to terms with someone you felt so safe with and saw as your protector. He's a first responder. Oh, so I thought, you know, they do this to you. You're just like, I have to come to terms with it. You're not this person I thought you were. Yeah. And um, I don't know if I'm ever going to shoot with anybody again. Uh, I don't feel like I don't want to be in a room with strangers. I don't want to be 
alone with any man. I don't want the Amazon driver to talk to me. I don't want FedEx guy to talk. Like, nobody. Just, like, stay away from me. And when you already feel like people, you know, I'm very recognizable everywhere I go. I am terrified. I have a mild case of agoraphobia leaving my house. Like, coming. Since, Since the incident. I was supposed to leave Friday to come here to Hollywood, to LA to, for the show. I was supposed to leave Saturday. I was supposed to leave Sunday. I was supposed to leave Monday. And Monday I stalled, 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 mm-hmm. and didn't leave till 2 o'clock. Because I, not that I was going to cancel. I just couldn't get in the car and go. And I was, the car was packed. I was packed. My dog was boarded. Everything was done. And it was just like, go. Mm-hmm. And my therapist was just telling me that you, your brain isn't, doesn't know it's safe. Yeah. Because you have PTSD. It's exactly why it's called PTSD. Yeah. It's post traumatic. And yeah, you know, I'm just terrified of everybody. Yeah. I can understand uh, that. And I don't, you know, my I'm with my mom because she's just like, I, I'm just glad you're alive. My parents are so upset for me my dad lost sleep my stepmom they're they're all just like you know i'm gonna see everybody this week while i'm here i'm taking this whole week to just kind of recharge restart all of it and Mm -hmm. kind of ground myself so that when i go home now over the over the weekend that i'm actually ready to fight back i have to file the restraining order i have to you know, deal with the district attorney and then I am going to leave town for a couple of weeks just for my own safety. Cause I am scared. He's going to come back or send somebody he knows. Like, yeah, I can't imagine, you know, I mean, have a lot of really good people watching out for me. Um, you know, my friend in the FBI, I have a friend who's a U.S. Marshal, you know, just so many great people. And that's like all I trust. And even then I'm still like nervous. Yeah. Like, isn't it a terrible thing to have such a traumatic situation make you realize how many people that you have on your side and like, you know, recognize the gratitude in the people that are there for you? It is. And at the same time, two of my best friends have not handled this very well. And I think it's just their own traumatic experiences. Yeah. Um, but they're not even checking on me on a daily basis. Yeah. I haven't even, and it's like, wow, you're like my sisters. And I'm kind of disappointed. You, you, you learned a lot about a lot of people. Yeah. But to find out that, yeah, so many people cared um, and are grateful that not only that I'm still alive, but are like, you know, you you change everybody's life that you come in contact with, not just a man that you're in a relationship with, but especially those Mm -hmm. men. And even those some of those men have come out of the surface like, hey, are you all right? I saw your socials are gone. Like, no, this is what happened. And they're like, oh, my God, you know, like. I think also you'll see after this episode comes out, like how many people will reach out to you. There's so many, you know, other survivors of domestic abuse. I mean, kind of ironically, the last interview that I did right before you was Christy Mack. Uh, I am. Who had a horrific experience. Horrific. Like I've seen her in Vegas and I don't even approach her because I can imagine what it feels like. Now, more than ever, I get it. Like if someone is going to come at me, I'm probably going to freak out. Yeah. Um, But I followed her stories and have just always kind of had an adoration for her bravery. Yeah. And with me, it's just been, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I think that's okay. It's like okay I, to not know. I, I mean, just, I'm going to be solo, but like, I don't know how I could perform. I don't, I definitely don't trust any single perform, like yeah. closed doors situations. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't even think about any of that right now. It's. Do you think that you can allow yourself some time to not need to worry about having to know the next steps? To give Can yourself I? time to I don't recover. know. I'm that kind of person that just goes, keep going. Yeah. You know, people told me to cancel the show, and I said, absolutely not. This is Holly Randall. I'm so excited to oh be doing God. this. I would have totally understood. But, it, but I felt like I wasn't going to give this that much power. Right. Work has to keep going, mm-hmm. you know? I'm thankful I have such a great team. Like, I have a, a marketing team that have, have, have bleh, I can't talk. Sorry. <laughs> it's Okay. <laughs> I have a great marketing team that handles so much for me. Mm-hmm. So even with a social media break, work's still going. Yeah. Um, and I just, you know, I am taking time, but it's just, 
you know, he had hurt me in the past as far as relationship goes. And I was like, he'll never hurt me the same way again. Yeah. I did not expect it to be this. Yeah. You know, and he's tried to call me twice on Facebook Messenger because I had forgot to delete that. And I was keeping in touch with one girlfriend who was going through her own crisis. And I was trying to support her. And I was like, listen, I got to get your phone number because I got to delete this app. Yeah. And, you know... I, I just deleted it. I, I don't want to. I have absolutely nothing to say to him. I can't imagine what that person would have to say to me. Like, there is nothing you can say to me that is going to make me think that this was an accident, mm -hmm. that it wasn't intentional. Um, you're a first responder and you're trained in restraining people. If you were trying to restrain me, which I know he's going to try to claim, mm -hmm. you don't put someone in a chokehold. No. You don't put your hands on their throat. That is not restraining somebody. No. Um, God, and all the bruises. I had bruises all over my legs. Like, he threw me down so many times. He was not a small dude. He was a very fit person. You know, I'm 280 pounds. He pick, picked me up all the time, put me right over his shoulders like I was a piece of paper. Yeah. So this is not a weak person who did this to me. And I'm just... embarrassed yet grateful yeah i could imagine that there's got to be a just a huge swirl of emotions happening right now that you know i haven't really it's just been able to take, process them i mean how this is like a hugely traumatic event it's only happened a week ago i feel like you can allow yourself time to process I'm however just happy long to be it alive. takes you i'm that's all to. i think about is like this person really tried to take my life and I didn't, I don't understand why because I was so good to him. I can't even enjoy it. Like I was in my pool one of the days last week and just every noise like over the gate is at him, is at him yeah. and, and my phone right by the pool like so I could call 911 if he showed yeah. up and having an escape plan like how fast can you get out of the pool? How fast can you get in the house? You know, like yeah. And I don't want to live like that. And I don't want to, I already don't like feeling like, um, like I do, like a victim and helpless. And I'm, I'm trying really hard to fight it. Yeah. You know, let, sit with it and let it pass. But it's very difficult because I want to just withdraw and play video games and not speak to anybody. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, <laughs> you will deal with it however you need to and however it suits you it sounds like you have good people behind you you have a therapist i have an like, amazing therapist that's so important and i think just allow yourself forgiveness and allow yourself time i think that's the most key important thanks for thing. saying that allow myself forgiveness i am even my therapist was like we were too soft you know we knew he could be dangerous because he was he was showing signs of aggression yeah but i can i can imagine that it's hard to think that somebody that you care about would go that far. Well, I thought, you know, he he was wanting to improve himself, change who he was. And I was one of, I'm one of those people that is like I'll I'll love you with your de I'll walk with you to face your demons. I'll do yeah. this with you. But I didn't expect this. Yeah. Well, I hope that that quality in you doesn't doesn't go away entirely because there are other people who are deserving of that kind of forgiveness, but Sounds like he's not that guy. <sighs> anyway. Well, Sophia, thank you so much <laughs> for like telling us about your story and, and sharing your experience with us. And I'm sorry we didn't get through your list I'm of really questions. Honest. No, it's so good. It's good. You can have me back. <laughs> Fuck those list of questions. Um, but yeah, so now my fans will know why I have been disappeared mm -hmm. off socials. Um, yeah. Just for my safety at this point. Well, uh -huh. I hope that they give you the support that you clearly deserve um and you know being so brave to come on and talk about this experience i know that there are so many other people who've experienced very similar situations yeah. who will feel empowered by your story so oh, i hope so <laughs> even yeah. though i don't need i don't feel empowered by my own story yet <laughs> of course not of course not but I, I can tell you that the bravery with you going through it coming out here talking about it so oh, openly, i'm gonna fight is something I just, that... I feel like the the fire in me is on simmer right now. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, oh. it'll come back. I know it will. I know it will because I have been through so much already. Yeah. You know, I've survived so much and I'm just tired of surviving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I'll get, I know I'll get there. It's just hard and, yeah. and shocking and, and it's impact. It's going to impact my career and that's where I'm a little lost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, we support you. And I'm thankful for my fans because yeah. they have, I have built such an amazing community of fans that just. Everything I touch, they want a piece of. And yeah. I'm so grateful. Well, and, allow them to support you and also to give you the space that you might need. You deserve that. So thank you. Thanks, Holly. No. Um, can you please tell everybody where yeah. they can find you, though you may not be terribly active <laughs> for a little while, you said? Um, yes. Yeah, so I love Sophia Rose dot live. It's L I V E. And, uh, that will take you to all my official socials in case one gets deactivated or suspended. Um, but that is active right now. And I'm only active on my ePlay channel and my only fans at this point, everything else, um, all the free socials are down. Um, and that is because this person will continue to look for me, but, um, when they are back, it will be available through I love Sophia Rose dot life. Okay. Fantastic. And you guys, as always can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course go to hollylinks.com for links to all of my platforms as well. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Please drop a Sophia a note and let her know, um, you know, that she is loved and, um, we appreciate you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.